The Muse Academy by me, Heidi Hansen. Introduction. Dark, cold, sharp wind whipping at the attic sun window, rattling the glass, daring to push the latch open, nearly bursting through. The attic shook, but the attic keeper did not, for it was not a windstorm threatening to blow in this hidden room at the top of the Muse Academy. It was the vacas and the attic keeper had dealt with them before and won. Chapter One Suddenly, without warning, a fresh burst of wind came zinging through the attic room, scattering paintings and drawings and papers and books and pencils and paint palettes and brushes and blankets, pillows and rugs, and the cat, the big white fluffy cat with the white peacock plume tail. She went flying through the air, surfing the wind that had just blown in as the window opened and five little muses tumbled in. They were each a different bright color and had slightly different shapes, but they were all just about the size of a small and favored coffee mug. And they were trembling from the vacuous storm outside trying to get in or from the cat's steely green-eyed glare or from the attic keeper herself, who ignored the vacuous howling and banging the window and quietly growled, you're not supposed to be in here. The Muse Academy is officially closed. All muses have been sent home. The bank has foreclosed on it, all of it. The academy, the staff, the building, the campus. You're not supposed to be here, especially not in my attic. No one is allowed in here. No one even knows I'm here. You have to go now. Storm, the rescue cat, who was named because once, a long, long time ago, the only known occasion when the attic keeper had actually left her attic room to venture out into a fierce fall rainstorm and rescued this cat, whom at the time was tiny and skinny and shivering and did not speak for a long, long time, even though her new home in the attic was filled with plush pillows, high perches of warm fire, and stacks and stacks of cans of tuna fish. But that was then. The attic keeper hasn't been out since, and nobody knows. She is even up there with Storm. And how she gets all those boxes and boxes of tuna fish on sale, as well as varieties of other delicacies from around the globe, nobody knows. We can't go home, said Dance, one of the muses, shuffling his feet. We haven't got any home, said Artie, the other muse. We are orphan muses, said Music, shaking his orange fuzzy head. Yeah, said Bookie. No artist has chosen us yet. We haven't been placed. We haven't been adopted. But that's not the real reason, is it, muses? Techie eyed his muse mates sharply. The attic keeper leaned forward from her chair and put her hands on her knees, breathed in deeply and asked sternly, Muses, spill it. What exactly is the real reason you're still here? Artie Muse waved her hands in the air as Dance Muse did a few taps on his tap shoes and she exclaimed, We've stayed on to save the day, of course. What else would we be here for? And those vacas? are going to break through that window any minute, and we are all perished. We are in peril. She dove into a basket to hide, spilling its contents, rolls and scrolls of papers all over, now scattering all across the floor. Attic Keeper stood up and stomped her foot, slapped her sketchbook shut. Go away. I have no time for that kind of melodrama. I have no interest in users who do not have the sensibility to get themselves adopted and the bank forecloses on this academy. Out, out, I have work to do. And she sat back down and got back to her task of staring at the blank page. Ideas? Wookie asked, looking through each scroll of paper. Yes, if you must know, Attic Keeper answered with a sigh. Those are all ideas, old, unused ideas. Abandoned. They haven't got any artists either old, discarded, unadoptable ideas. There's a lot more down in the basement. 
There are so many different ideas here, shouted Bookie in glee as she plowed through the many other baskets, all filled with scrolls of ideas. Ideas for stories and songs and plays and dance routines. Why are they being thrown out? They're being repurposed, recycled. I need them to get past my artist's block, grumbled the attic keeper. Will the vacas suck them up too, along with us, if they do get in here? Dance trembled a bit as the pounding on the window grew louder, angrier even. The sun window panes began to shake violently. The vacas will suck us out of ourselves and inhabit our cells, announced Artie with doom. The attic keeper was up now, cracking open a can of tuna on the food shelf using a cranky old can opener. Storm the Cat was wrapped around her arms as she worked the can opener over and over, purring loudly and nudging her head against the attic keeper's hands. She almost knocked the can opener out of her hand. She was so excited by the fishy aroma that filled the attic. No, said attic keeper. Vacus won't inhabit your cells. They will suction out yourself though, your personality. Vacas don't have any of their own, so they'll force or trick you out of your own personality, your own self, and all the ideas and feelings and opinions and dreams and work you've done and are doing and ever will do. The muses fell silent. The attic room was entirely still and quiet, except for the fire's warm crackling and storms purring she dipped her nose deeper into the tuna fish can. Oh, so they are after these ideas. Artie pointed to the basket of idea scrolls and scurried to pick up those that had rolled into the nooks and crannies of the room. They want more than that, said Attic Keeper. Vacus are entirely empty and have no capacity to use what they suck out of others. So they are always voracious for more. They're always empty always on the prowl to take more. And that's why they're here tonight, to get more. End of chapter one.